The champions, spread among the nobles to appeal to as many donors as possible, pick up on a few concerning details about Mace's current defense, as in its lack of one. The morning stars are divided, the king and prince are at odds, and the threat of an enemy on two fronts make Mace's defenses seem inadequate to the dangers that they face. But the dangers of war are far away, and the dangers within the walls are looming ever closer. Uh, we should go. <laughs> um, Do we have to? I, I have protocol for, you know, if I wake up and need to dress tastily, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you have that set. I mean, I'm just being real. Do I? Do we have to? Did it sound like it came... Because I walked with um the king and the prince to like the prince's room. Did it sound mm -hmm. like it came from that direction? It did. I'm fucking bolting. Piper, mostly dressed. Bolts. I'm going too. Wait, bolting towards or away? Towards. Oh, okay. Okay, well, Craig hears the noise, wakes up. You just see Craig bolt through the door. The doll, you see his axe in his hand, his loincloth in his hand, and he's just running for the door. No, 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 no. And I, I just... Hmm? Up. Yeah, yeah, Fix it. Yeah. Fine. Fix it. It's on, but it's kind of, like, tilted a little, so it just, like... It's covered, but if he jumps too high, it might. Now go. <laughs> All right, so you guys, except Jeltor, are bolting down. Oh, I mean, they're bolting. I'll grab my bow and a He's dagger, gonna and I guess I'll walk. walk. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I guess this is happening again. Because he hears everyone thundering past his room, probably. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not bolting that way. I am walking as well, but like, I'm a halfling. I walk slower than everyone. I, I love the fact that you have, like, the two of them bolting down the hallway. Meanwhile, the older guys are just kind of like, Ugh, fucking hell, why am I getting <laughs> up this early? Ugh. So, I'm assuming Piper and Craig are the first ones to make it to the room. Easily. Yes. Mm -hmm. The door is open, mm -hmm. and the scene is as I paint for you. You see Korth standing there, not in his plate mail. He is standing there in night clothes, but he is holding his greatsword, and he's holding it to the throat of Dancia, the cleric of Bala, who was obviously the one who screamed originally, uh, but now has been cut off because there's a blade to her throat. She is wearing a white nightgown, and that is it. Her eyes are wide in terror, and her hair is, you know, loose. And Korth is looking at her. You don't even need an insight check for this. There is fury in his eyes. And as you look about the room, you do see Prince Coram laying in his bed, eyes wide open and staring at the ceiling, but he is completely unmoving. Oh, no. I think he's dead. What, what happened? The witch! That is when King Sarath enters from the other side. His bedroom is the opposite side from where you are staying. He approaches, and he has guards with him. And the guards see what's going on. They kind of pause, and Sarath just nods at them. And they move in, and they grab Korth, and they grab Dancia. And Sarath beelines right for Coram's bed. I was gonna say, someone make a medicine check. Yeah, can I get a medicine check? Uh, if you move up to help as well, you obviously had nothing to do with it because you arrived like seconds before he did, so he'll allow you to come near. Oh, well, that sucked. 12. Uh, he's not dead. He, he seems to be okay. in shock, but he's not dead. He's, he's not moving. He's not blinking. I know I'm not there. Uh, I'm not a person there, but I'm just curious. Um, blood? Is there blood? Yeah, are and there any injuries? You do not see blood or injuries on him. Okay. Wait, he's not dead. What happened? Um, Craig kind of looks up 
like where he quote unquote might be staring. White ceiling. Hmm. Nothing up there. And the guards grab both Korth and Dancia. Yeah, they didn't like, know what was going on. They just grabbed the people in this room. Because you guys were standing outside the room. You hadn't entered yet. They walked up. They're like, those people are in the room. Grab them both. Gotcha. And Sarath just turns and goes, what has happened here? He points at Korth first. Korth, uh, who has been relieved of his sword, says, I, I heard a scream. I, I came across the hall to the prince's room. And I found Dancia standing over the prince, muttering and holding her hands to his chest. I shouted for her to get away from the boy, who looked like the life was leaving him with every word she uttered. As soon as I shouted, uh, Dancia looked up in alarm, and a shadow departed from the room. I, I knew she must have been killing the boy, and I'll admit that I lost my temper and was ready to slay her where she stood before our guests arrived and I regained my senses. The king kind of nods, looks at Dancia. And your version? Uh, you can see Dancia just has, like, tears pouring down her face. Like, she was looking in terror before. She is apparently just broken. She's, uh, she starts explaining, I, I sleep in, in the prince's room to watch over him. He's sickly, so I... And you actually can see there's a cot at the base of the bed. Um, I, I grant him the blessings of Bala. I, I awoke from a horrible dream of, of monsters and, and dragons and, and spiders, and there was a shadow wrapping itself around the prince, claws around his throat. I rushed over and I began to pray to Bala to help preserve the boy's life. But the response was weak, and the shadow did not depart until Korth rushed in and shouted. There's kind of like a, a muttering between the guards and everything until the king holds up his hand. I am unsure who to believe. Guards, take them both to the dungeons. Put them in the most comfortable cells we have to be held until he turns and he looks at you guys. You have done great things for my kingdom and my people. I would ask that you do so again. If you could investigate the claims of both of these and tell me who is to be believed, I would be greatly appreciative. The liar shall be executed for the attempt on my son, whether by direct action of murder or stopping the one who would have saved him. You have my permission to investigate any portion of the palace that you wish, except for my bedroom and study. And also, he turns to one of the guards. Fetch him. Him, sir? But I know... Just fetch him. <laughs> it's sorry, if you would like to interrupt any of those fetch hims... I was going to wait until the king left. I, I assume the king wanted to make a beeline out before he arrived. The king is going to, um, he actually has a couple of the guards collect Corum, and they're going to take him not to the king's chamber, but to another location that okay. they can keep him under guard. And the king is going to go with him. Hmm. So it gives so, us this room. It, yes, you have the room. And a, there are a couple guards posted, but one leaves to go fetch him. Uh, so it looks like we're looking for a shadow. Yeah, that's the one thing that both of their stories had was the shadow. As Jill Tor is kind of snickering like, God damn it, Craig puts his hand on his shoulder going, It's okay, the prince will be fine, and we that's get to help. <laughs> that's not a snicker, That's a uh, that was a groan. <laughs> not happy. Craig does not understand and think like, oh, he's really sad about the prince. And he's like, I'm going to make him feel better. We need to talk to Carl because he seems to be the only one that knows what Shadow might have, direction it might have gone to. Yeah. That's true. We could also check the room. Um, 
something that occurred to me during the party, and I kind of wanted to, I kind of wanted to talk to the prince about in the morning, um, because it seems like he and his father differ on a lot of ideas about the protection of the city and aid. Um, yeah. I kind of wonder if he is being kept sick on purpose. Nah. Maybe. I don't know. Why would someone it, do that? It, it was just a thought that occurred to me. Or, you know, if he's kept, you know, weak, he can't yeah. fight for control of the kingdom. Or fight to put the ideas into action. I mean, last thing they need is to keep dividing their forces. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to do a quick investigation, but in Craig style, of the, uh, on all fours, sniffing the ground and just sniffing everywhere, climbing on everything, and just doing a general, like... All right, well, everything, this room isn't exactly lavish. Mm. Um, which is weird. This is a prince. You would think, you know, all this lavish stuff. No, he's got a very simple bed. There's a cot in front of it where Dancia said she slept. Mm. There is a desk and a bookshelf, and there is almost like a vanity where he would prepare himself for the day. Mm. Craig, I guess, would be, I guess, smelling around just to see if he smells anything odd, because I'm sure, like, he's brief smell of the prince and everything, like... Craig's just weird like this, so... That works. Uh, you can go ahead and roll me... Let's make it a survival check. Okay. Oh, that's better. Uh, 16. 16? You're... You're picking up something... By the bookshelf that doesn't smell like him. Mm -hmm. It doesn't smell preternatural. It does sa smell like something from nature. But that's weird, because this... This guy doesn't ever leave the castle. I'm gonna start moving my way towards that smell just to see what that might be because it's a little different than the rest of the room and everything. Alrighty. At that moment, mm -hmm. the door flies open. Somebody gets that porcupine away from the crime scene. And in walks in a tall gentleman in a long coat uh, a long, like a, like almost like a rain overcoat. One might even deign to call it a detective coat, if they were me. And in strides a very poised gentleman. He has very angular features. He has dark skin. He is bald, except, and he has a mustache, and the mustache is fire. Oh my god, I love it. I love everything about this. Yeah. I love everything about this. And he is holding a magnifying glass. <laughs> okay. There's no way you actually talk like that. Pardon? Did you say something to me? Yeah, there's no way you talk like that. What are you talking about? Who who are you? Everyone clear away, please. Uh, we, we are... The great detective Francois Amberger is here to investigate. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I am standing here, so it is of no matter to me whether or not you believe. Now, as I was saying, please uh, remove your porcupine. He is contaminating my crime scene. Uh, we are also we were also told to help with the investigation to find out what happened. Uh, Francois looks to a guard who I guess like walked in trailing behind him. Um, yeah. <laughs> is this does this person speak the truth? Uh, yeah, the the king wanted. Uh, they're the ones that did the the thing with the gnolls and the short oh. one over there killed the dragon. All right, uh, Francois looks over. Uh, fucking face palms. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are two short people here, so <laughs> you could pawn it off on crack. Uh, but Francois looks over and just does a little like a little flip of the hand. Very well, I shall allow it. And he he kind of looks you over very coolly for a fire genasi and uh, and says, just do not disturb anything, anything that can be used as evidence. 
And then he turns back to the guard and begins uh, speaking quietly with the guard. So if you wanted to approach him, you could. I was gonna so say, go what's to, the? I was like, sorry, what's in a bookshelf that Craig was sniffing at? I'm, I'm going for it. Like whatever it is, I'm hunting this thing. Like it, there's gonna no tomorrow. follow Craig. What you find, boy? <laughs> what, you, what you pick up? So, Jeltor and Craig, we're gonna have this be the background of what's going on with whatever conversation's about to happen there. Yeah. But I would love uh, for you guys to make an investigation check. Sure. Sure. It was also it, just it, kind those of those at the bookshelf. <laughs> oh, those at the bookshelf. Investigation. Uh, sweet. Sixteen. Twenty-five. Sixteen. Craig, you're like there are books here. I can yeah, read I some of these. I, the funny thing is, I kind of uh, see Craig being like, uh, "What's that? A uh, pointer dog?" Where it's just like, "Dung." <laughs> where it's just like. No, no. I Actually, you can read some of these. That wasn't a joke. Um, oh. Some of them are in Dwarvish. Some of them are in, in uh, Common. There's some in Elvish, and I don't think you speak Elvish. But the Dwarvish ones seem to be talking about technological advancements, weapons of war, shipbuilding, which is weird for dwarves because they don't really build the ships. That's more of an Elvish thing. But it's it's something that's talked about in their book. So it seems like there's a lot of technical readings in Dwarvish. In common, you see a lot of more theology, philosophy, that kind of thing. Uh, with the 25, however, um, Jeltor, you see that jammed into the bookshelf at a, on, on a shelf higher up that normally people wouldn't be looking at, there is a piece of cloth folded up and tied with braided leather. It is a dark green bundle about the size of your palm, but it is wedged in the corner. Can I, can I take it out? Uh, you'd have to either activate your boots and flutter up or climb up. I have a climbing speed, so I'll climb up. All right. You get up there and you find the folded cloth tied with braided leather. Alright, uh, I open it. Alright, inside you find a lock of hair, also braided in thinner leather, so it doesn't, you know, fall apart into a pile of hair. But you find a braid of what is kind of a darkish brown, somewhat reddish color of hair. What color was the prince's hair? Did we, did we know anyone like that? The prince's uh, hair was a dark brown, almost black. Kethra's hair? You can hmm. see some similarities, but uh, make a nature check on it. Uh, 19. Uh, 19, you recognize that this is not human hair. It is, in fact, bear. Mmm. So very good chance that this is Kethra's hair. Um, can I sniff it now that it's pointed out? Sure. Um, can I make it? Did Jill Tour come back down? That... <laughs> or is he just is he just clinging onto the bookshelf? I was like, come back down. I'm not gonna cling onto the bookshelf. Oh, there was uh, there were other things in there. I apologize, I missed that. So besides the lock of hair, you also find a golden ring and a carved totem that looks like it is taking the shape of a bear, but not completely. It's still in the works. Got it. Don't think this is going to help us. <laughs> um, Brian, d could, like, pretty much I was close enough to her to, uh, smell her. Does it smell similar with a, uh, t dirty 20? Yeah, you can definitely smell the, the, the dirt, the, the, the fur, definitely a bear scent to it. You recognize that. So, yeah, you get the feeling that this is probably Kethra's fur. Um, but the ring and the wood, the wood carving, they only have the scent from being in the bundle with it. They don't have the scent of her, like, it's, permeating them. It's not as strong. Basically, Craig would be like, this is Kethra's hair, and I don't know why it's here. Sorry, I mean, hold on. Sarah's just gonna say, this is not Kethra's hair, this is Kethra's fur. So now we know the prince is a furry. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Oh, God damn it. I agree. I 
wonder if he meant to give the ring and or the figurine to her. Why does he have her hair? They were friends. There's also really <laughs> the real question is, who cares? It ain't helping us find a shadow that tried to kill him. <laughs> well, true. I mean, she was concerned for him. She might know something that was going. I look at this great detective. As the great detective, what are your thoughts? He looks up. He's got his magnifying glass now, magnifying one of his eyes. Uh, he was he was examining the door. Um, what color are his eyes? Out of curiosity, dark, 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 dark. It's dark. Like, well, they're probably dark brown, but like they're so dark, they might almost be black. They look like coals. Yes, they're very okay. Very intense. Very shining. Very inquisitive. Um. Uh huh. <laughs> and he and he looks up, and he says, "I think that we need to investigate the location more completely, and I need to interrogate the suspects. I cannot draw a conclusion before I have done my work. Uh, oh, have I, I see? Have you found something that may be of use to us?" And he straightens up and he comes over and and comes to look at the the packet. We found something not of use, though. Yeah, I don't think this is of any use. I believe that I will be the determiner of that. And he... <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> knock it. You know what? Knock yourself out. I give them, <laughs> I give them the whole thing. And he, he kind of takes a look at it. No, I hand it to you. Yeah, you can have it. Knock yourself yeah. out. <laughs> he turns over the ring. He turns over... He holds the, the bear carving up, and he examines it with the magnifying glass. He, like... He, like, very gently, like, picks up the hair, and he, like, smells it, but he's very careful because he doesn't want the fire mustache to, like, <laughs> to set it on fire. A sad day for the prince. And he places it back in the bundle, and he closes it up, uh, and, and he says, I believe we must uh, put this aside. I cannot draw any conclusions from it yet, but you never know. Francois, do me a favor and make a quick history check. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, uh, 14. 14. You remember that the prince and Kethra had been very close. And you also know that the carving is something that you've seen more of the um, tribal folk use as uh, almost like a courting. And ah. the ring is most definitely something that they use in Mace as yes. proposals. Right, correct. But he does not say any of this. He just says, I do not think that we can rule anything out at this moment. I will place it aside. And he puts it uh, in a little cloth bag <laughs> that he hands to the guard. All right. So that was what you found on the bookcase. You have a vanity, you have the bed, you have the desk, you have other uh, parts of the room if you wish to continue to investigate. Um, can I investigate over near the bed since that's where it seemed like things were going down? Uh, sure. Things and went I, down all right. I mean, yeah, obviously. Not and in I, his bed. Ha! <laughs> I was just thinking that, like, I know this is like so serious, but I keep Piper just keeps glancing at the mustache going. Oh no! Just would not work. <laughs> I mean, you're fire resistant. <laughs> I am, but <laughs> oh no, he's hot. <laughs> she's she's good. She just uh, you know had some fun. She's good. <laughs> right, 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 right. But okay, there's that just um... little bit of. Uh -oh. That brings burning to a new meaning. Anyway, yeah, checking yeah. the bed Side out. Eye. Side eye in it. Gotcha, gotcha. Nah, nah. Um, that's only an eight. And uh, the the bed. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't seem to toss and turn a lot. The the sheets and covers seem to be pretty uh, pretty well kept. But other than that, Detective Omberger comes over to the bed where where Piper is standing and is like very calmly, like has his hand like up on his chin kind of like tapping his chin a little bit and he's looking down at at the bed he's like moving up and down and then he goes voila and then he seems like 
very satisfied and he he kind of straightens up and he looks at Piper and he says, so remind me again, you have been put in charge of this investigation or you are, how do you say, contractors? Yeah, that one. (laughs) What he said, um, we have done some service for the king before and when we came to the screen, when we heard the screaming, he asked us to help figure out what happened. And what uh, what did you see when you came into the room? I, were you what who was first in the room? Who came in next? Do you what did you see? Please tell me uh, tell me what you observed because you were all here before me. Can we cast exposition? <laughs> That's it. The trap rumor ran in first and I point to his Piper. I do not understand this turn of phrase. Can you uh, perhaps She runs into a lot of traps. Oh, Oh, I see when you are out the, how you say, adventuring, yes? Yes. I understand. And were there any traps in the room? No. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't encounter them. <sighs> Piper is giving you such a look, Jill Tor. Thank goodness she doesn't, you don't actually see pupils because her eyes are just one color, but <laughs> oh, the look she would be giving you. And I explained the scene with Korth and Dancia yep. with the, the great sword mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to her throat and about the prince staring wide-eyed, but he was unharmed, but it looks like he's in shock. Very well, very well. I understand. And I tell you about what they mentioned about the shadow, because they both mentioned that. Yes, I do believe the guard had said something about this, but I was not quite sure what to make of it. Uh, Uh, She did also mention a dream about dragons and spiders and monsters, which we have been encountering so far. So a dream a dream is not uh, you cannot harm someone in a dream so so much that I know she is in contact with her with her goddess it might have been a message or, or a warning so she says uh, and he he turns abruptly and uh, goes to like he starts like uh, he stands in the middle of the room, and you can see he's like looking at the corners, the the top corners of the room. Um, is there a window in here, Brian? Uh, there is. Yes. Uh, I would like to go to the window. All right, you're at the window. Is there anything off about it? Make an investigation check. Uh, twenty-one. It is closed. It is locked. Doesn't seem like anyone's been messing with it. Okay. I was making sure. What is the, um, oh, uh, forget her name. Dancia? Yeah, yeah where is Dancia's cot located? It is at the foot of his bed. At the very foot of his bed? Mm-hmm. So, like, he'd be sleeping one way, and she sleeps the, the, the width of the bed. So, like, she's... Perpendicular? Yeah, yeah, she's perpendicular to the way he'd be sleeping. Gotcha. Uh, I want to check her cot, then. Go ahead. Roll investigation. Uh, 21. 21? Oh, 22, 22, 22. 22. You see a small bag that has uh, clothing, basic amenities. This is not where she spends all of her time. You get the feeling she probably has a room of her own somewhere. This is just like an overnight bag. But nothing seems like... Oh, for anything, right? No, you found you found like spare clothes and a toothbrush. That's really what you got out of that like cot. Gotcha. Is there an under the bed? Uh, there is, but there's nothing under it. Okay. Oh, it's, a, it's a shadow, so I'm just making sure. Right. You said there's a desk and a vanity as well. Correct. Check the desk. Go for it. Okay. Uh, eighteen plus four, so twenty-two. All right. Uh. When you look at his desk, it's it's weird for like Sarah made this joke last time that the prince is a warhawk. He has a map of a fort labeled Fort Black Dove on his desk. It seems very old. It looks like old blueprints from when it was first built. Uh, but it has a general layout. And you also see a pile of books that he was probably reading and looking at the map going back and forth. Uh, But you notice that there is a little piece of paper uh, sticking out of one of the books. 
open the book to the page and check out the piece of paper. All right. So the book you pick up is called The Rise and Fall of Empires, The Proper Use of Subterfuge. Um, there is the, the piece of paper that's in there flutters out, falls on the desk, and you look and see that it's a note. The note says, Though we are not an army, we greatly wish to be of service to you. You have shown yourself to be a good friend to the people and a loyal patron with honor of a true king. If there is any aid we can lend you, we are at your service. And it just has uh, S-O-M at the bottom. Hey, Jotor. Yep. Does this mean anything to you? Uh, it's probably from the Black and Sons. Hmm. You're probably right. I mean, given his ideals and versus his things, father's ideals. I mean, it makes sense they'd support him. It does. Well, I mean, that's, I, all, this, all that does is bring to light something that I thought was pretty obvious, but mm, uh, that's true. That's kind of why. I, was thinking that about the prince possibly being kept sick. I don't know if it goes that deep, but possibility. Oh, great detective! Uh, he he looks lazily up from where he's investigating, like a waste paper basket or something. <laughs> Are we? I hold up the note. He comes over, uh, plucks the note, and reads it. Well, I think that we have gained some information about the prince. Have we not? Um, Possibly. Um, this is... Uh, where did you find this? Right here. And I still have the book open to where he left it, thinking it might be like a bookmark. Yeah. <laughs> he says, oh, that is not suspicious at all that you found it laying around just uh, up on... Uh, on the desk with no... It was not hidden at all. I I mean, it was in the pile and I saw it sticking out, but sure, sure. <laughs> what was it? It was something from... It was something from, uh... Like a... Like some kind of a military group or some kind of a pro... I need... I need Sarah to make a quick history check. Twelve. So you know that the people in the Morning Stars refer to those that left as the Blackened Sons. Okay. But they referred to themselves as the Sons of Mace. S-U-N-S of Mace. Okay. So S-O-M would be the Sons of Mace. Okay. So I, so I do know who it is. You know who it is, yes. Okay. Well, I'm sure that, uh, that this has nothing at all to do with the current uh, tensions between the king and his son. Not, not one bit at all. But you know, I think before we, before we go and march down to the king and tell him you have attempted to assassinate your son, I, I think that we should. That's go. a lot of wheeze in there. That's not exactly what I was. That's not what I was saying. It was just a theory that we're. Well, a I, lot of wheeze thrown in there. <laughs> I believe you are also in this investigation, are you not? Yeah, but I wasn't saying I'm going to go and down there. And it is we. Yes, no, it is we. do not no. drag me in with your shenanigans. Well, great detective. Maybe you should go talk to the witnesses. But I think that perhaps we should go and investigate uh, the rooms of the suspects before we go interrogate them. Do you not? I mean, yes. You said let us go! But we're not done with this room yet! Why don't you lead the way? He turns on his heel and he marches out the door. Bye! <laughs> down, down the hall. <laughs> I have to see this. I'll be back. And I go follow the uh, detective. <laughs> okay. You said there was a desk and there was a vanity. There's like one more thing to look at. Yeah, there's the vanity. You can go ahead and roll an investigation check in there if you like. 14. Routine, you don't really find much of anything. It's it, the thing is, it has like those products to take care of your appearance and everything. And Piper, you being one who appearance means a lot to because it's part of your job. Mm -hmm. You recognize that he has what he needs to look presentable. He doesn't overdo. He doesn't have this um, 
this need to like really make himself up. It's a very simple but appropriate amount. Hmm. I mean, when you've been sick for a good majority of your life, yeah, that tends to happen. Well, that too is, but it's also like, he doesn't try to put on. Well, and, and he hasn't given up either. Yeah, he's still putting himself together, but it's not like, oh, I'm going to put on that full face of powder. And, and no, he's just like, comb the hair, oil it back, make sure that mm-hmm. I'm dry and, and clean and ready to go. Fair. I guess we follow. Detective, whose room did you go to first? Whose room is closer? Korth's room is directly across the hall from the princess. Yeah, let's go to Korth. Alright, so when you go into Korth's room, it's much more modest. It is a simple bed, a wooden desk, there's oiled rags, a whetstone, and several wall-mounted weapons of varying age and make. But uh, other than that, very simple looking room. Okay. Um. Is there a window? There's no window. Ooh. There's no papers or books or anything? There are no papers or books that you can see, but the desk does have drawers. Is there a chest? Um, there is no chest, actually. Okay. He starts, he's kind of looking, just standing like in the doorway, scanning the room, just looking through it. And then he goes over to uh, the bed and examines the bed and the sheets. All right. Make an investigation check. Uh, 16. 16. You see that there is loose straw at, like, in a very particular place next to the bed. Just a few scraps of it. A very particular place? How, what, what particular place is this? It, it's near, like, where the shoulder would rest, but it's only near where the shoulder would rest. I'd like to examine it closer. As you examine it closer, you pull back the sheets, you realize that the, the mattress is basically just straw. Um, and it looks like someone has cut into the mattress itself and either has been putting something in or taking something out of there as, like, a hidey hole. Oh, you found something. Uh, that remains to be seen, but uh, this is certainly not normal, do you think? And he kind of points out there's a hole. It's like, it looks like there might be something that uh, has gone in and out, as they say. And he kind of, like, uh, his hand in. <laughs> if you stick your hand in, yeah, yeah, you'll feel a leather block. I remove. Does it feel crusty? It is a a. (laughs) It's a leather wrapped around a book. If you unwrap it, you find a book. Okay, and what kind of book is it? Uh, It looks like a journal. Oh, that's less fun. Okay, I open it. (laughs) You turn to the first page, and Mm -hmm. it says. And when life itself has winked out like the final star in the sky above, I shall not fear, for empires rise and rulers fall, but the soul is unmarred by Solane's soil, and I will be judged only in the light of the sun and of the moon. Okay, I start I start flipping through looking for something more interesting. Every single page says that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there's nothing There's nothing else in it, there's nothing else stuck in or fall out or is there a pen in it or something? Uh, No, it just looks like it is handwritten and every single page repeats that exact same mantra. And yeah, that's yes, that was what that was. That's what Sarah thinks it is. It's it's a mantra or a a prayer or something. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like, you can make a religion check. No, I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hmm. I make a religion check? At disadvantage. Right, not your gods. 19. That is not bad at all. You've flipped through a couple of the books that they have here. You've spoken with some of the religious leaders. Just kind of getting a uh, a feel of what their religion is like. And one of their major gods, one that people look up to a great deal. In fact, probably more so than Molot, the god of the sun, 
and more feared than any other god, is Aurelius, the god of balance, the sun and the moon. Because he um. will always put things into balance. Um, question, is it dated? Are any of the entries dated? It looks, by looking at it, you would say probably this is something that is done every night. No, I know, but I wanted to look at the latest entry. Is the ink wet? Uh, it's not wet, but it fresh. is fresh. Okay, so it did happen tonight. Mm -hmm. That that was what I was trying to get at. Yes, this looks like something that Korth does every night before bed. He didn't seem that religious to me. Uh, some people, they keep their opinions to themselves. And some people do not. And he closes the book and he puts it back in the <laughs> in the mattress. And I guess people are starting to show up now. Yeah. People who followed. After having checked the vanity in the prince's room, Piper, Jeltor, and Craig will file into Korth's room and see as I have described it. Any luck? Um, oh, of course. I have solved it. Have you now? Everything is made clear to me. Right. Well, uh, clearly, if he was uh, so concerned with balance, perhaps uh, he did not want the balance to be disrupted by curing the prince. Do you see what I say? Yeah, except that what? he came into Dancia um, trying to expel the shadow off from herself, as she put it. So, don't think he be behind a shadow attacking him. Or in worst case scenario, Dancy attacking him. Uh, I see. You make a fair point. Perhaps I shall consider it. Um, and then he walks over and he starts looking at the desk. I will assist you with that. Go ahead and make try to assist. checks. Okay, let's see what's in this. If you are... Wow! Uh, 26! So, Piper, you're like, we'll just pick this rag up, and I mean, immediately Francois snatches up a piece of paper. Like, I was going to ah. say, like, that was a 16 to help, so. Yep. So I was going to give advantage. <laughs> but you don't well, I don't it. want advantage. Regardless, nope. you find a note that is covered in oil, a little difficult to read. But uh, it says, we understand your need to stay with the king. And with his son. However, you are needed much more greatly among your brothers. He is out of touch with the people, and in spite of all their efforts, Mace will fall. Only when we take up arms will we be able to take back what is ours. Is it signed? It is not signed. But make an intelligence check. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I make an intelligence check too? You may also make an intelligence check, except you weren't looking at the notebook. I know because I'm not even. It's like, oh look at that! That's pretty cute. They're trying to recruit, trying to recruit him too. Fifteen. Uh, the handwriting of the letter and the handwriting from the journal do not match. Why? This was a letter okay. sent to him, not yes, a letter yes. he was writing. Okay, gotcha. Oh well, this is uh, what this is how you say. Oh, there's no smoking. There's no guns in this world. Fuck. What 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 analogy can I use? This is how you say uh, the vibrating this is bowstring. This is the... Yes! The vibrating the vibrating booster! <laughs> Clearly, he was trying to be... Someone was trying to recruit him. They needed him to come. He wanted to join his brothers at arms. And uh, he wished to release himself from the service of the king. And how quicker to do that than have the brains be assassinated. I have solved it. I thought they were on the same side. And also, if he wanted the prince assassinated, one, wouldn't he have just let Dancia go through with whatever, or let the shadow do its thing, or whatever? We, we don't know all the facts yet. Quick, uh, uh, Scratch, order on that one. Yeah, as Scratch said, uh, the prince is working with them, so why would they want to assassinate him? Very well. You have pointed out a good uh, 
uh, a good course of action to perhaps not jump to conclusions. No, I keep jumping. It's fine. <laughs> Anything else on the desk? Uh, not on the desk. So but not in the desk. desk. Yeah, in the desk. In the desk. In the desk. Find, in the drawers. Like steel and things for like sharpening. You find there's no other paper. There's some some quills and things that he would use probably when he did his nightly ritual. Yeah. But there's empty bottles of ink. There's full bottles of ink. It doesn't seem like he's very organized when it comes to his desk. Imagine. But he has his armor to one side. He has weapons on his wall. Other than that. And uh, we also found that book in his bed. Uh, what is that? Some mancha to Aurelius. Okay, what kind of god is that? I think it was a god of balance. Alright, alright. Hmm. And if anyone wants further interest, uh, further information on that. I do, but I rolled an eight. <laughs> Where, um, where's Craig during this? That's a good question. Pretty much Craig would do the same thing. Walk in on all fours, start sniffing around, and, uh, survival. <laughs> It's a nat one, but it's a two on, two <laughs> on survival. Uh, Craig, I would like you also to, um, I would also like you to roll uh, just a perception check as well. Because you're not going to find anything with that survival, but I want to see if this happens. <laughs> 17. All right. So you're like sniffing around like, I'm going to find something, I'm going to find something. I'm going to, ooh, he's got weapons on his walls. Ooh, that one's pretty. And you're staring at a great sword that's hanging on the wall. It's not the one he was carrying with him before. Yeah. It's nice. The blade is this perfect steel. There's gold filigree in the hilt. And there's a shiny black stone on the pommel. Ooh, so I go to grab it. It is up on the wall. So you were like clambering up the wall to get to it. That's fine. I'm just letting the group know. <laughs> Uh, is Craig climbing the walls? I have the claws. He does have the claws! Oh, that's like he, right. he saw something shiny. Are we really gonna stop him? I think that your prickle pig has found something. Prickle and he <laughs> walks over and, and is is like like watching him climb. What have you found, strange little one? I found this cool axe! Sword. Sword. No no, let us let us not jump to conclusions. <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> this has been the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Champions of Solane is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set published by Wizards of the Coast. My name is Brian Scharf, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. My name is Nicole Summers, and I play Piper. And this is Jair, also known as JJ, and I play the character of John Torjactus. This is Matthew Reed, and I play Scratch. This is Andrew Brown, and I play Craig. Bonjour, my name is Sarah, and I play the role of Detective Francois Umberger. Theme music by Adrian Von Ziegler. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information about music in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers. The episode was edited by Matthew Reed with assistance from Sarah. Contact us out on Twitter at ReliablyChaotic, email us at ReliablyChaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in our description. If you like our show and would like to support us, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash ReliablyChaotic, or by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It really does help a lot. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again in our next adventure. I'm going to hold off on that for a second. Uh, I opened the locket.
You found the part that you would slide out and put a picture in, but it's just like a piece of paper in there that was. Oh my god! Does it have the, the default photo? Yeah, it yeah. has the default thing in it. Like, <laughs> okay. please tell me it's it's a picture of like stocks. Like oh it's a stock photo. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'll see myself out. <laughs> 